Hi everyone! Today let's talk about the skeletal system. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the components of skeletal system in relation to their functions, explain the bone formation, growth, and remodeling, and state the major categories and functions of the joints. Can you tell which part of the skull is fractured? You may pause this video for a while. Connective tissues are a diverse group of tissues that are involved in connecting, supporting, and protecting different parts of the body. There are various types of connective tissues, but in this slide, we will focus on the bones, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. Starting with bones, they are a type of connective tissue that are composed of cells and extracellular matrix consisting of collagen fibers and minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. Bones provide support and shape to the body, protect vital organs such as the brain and heart, and serve as an attachment sites for the muscles. The skeletal system is composed of 206 bones as well as cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. It forms the framework or skeleton of the body, providing support and structure for all the other tissues and organs. The skeletal system also has several other functions, including protecting vital organs, producing blood cells, and storing minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. One of the primary functions of the skeletal system is movement. The skeletal system provides points of attachments for muscle, allowing the limbs to move when the muscle pull on the bones. For example, the arms move when the biceps and triceps pull on the bones in the upper arm. The skeletal system also provides support to the body. The backbone or spine is the main support center for the upper body, holding the head up and protecting the spinal cord. The ribs also provide support and protection surrounding the lungs and the heart and preventing injury. Protection is another crucial function of the skeletal system. The skull bones protect the brain, while the ribs protect the lungs and heart. The skeletal system is also involved in blood production. Red and white blood cells are formed by tissue called marrow, which is the center of the bone. This process is called hematopoiesis and bones play an essential role in it. If you answered frontal bone to this question, then you are right. Good job! The skeletal system is also responsible for storing minerals such as calcium and phosphorus which are essential for many physiological processes in the body. Bones act as a reservoir for these minerals, releasing them into the bloodstream when the body needs them. The actual skeleton is consists of 80 bones. Examples are the skull, spine, ribs, and sternum, which is the bone that lies in the anterior midline of our thorax. The appendicular skeleton is consists of the bones of the limbs as well as the girdles that attach the limbs to the actual skeleton. The upper limbs consist of the arms, forearms, wrists, and hands, while the lower limbs consist of the thighs, legs, ankles, and feet. The girdles include the shoulder girdle, which attaches the arms to the actual skeleton, and the pelvic girdle, which attaches the legs to the actual skeleton. Now let's talk about the bones. Bones are composed of about 50% water and 50% of a solid calcified rigid substance known as osseous tissue. Classification of bones by shape. The first type of bone is the long bone. 
as the name suggests, these bones are longer than they are wide and they are characterized by having a cylindrical shape. Long bones include the femur or your thigh bone, the tibia, larger shin bone, fibula, smaller shin bone, humerus, upper arm bone, radius, which is the larger forearm bone, and ulna, smaller forearm bone. Long bones play a crucial role in supporting the body's weight and enabling our movement. The second type of bone is the short bone. Short bones are roughly as wide as they are long, and they are often cube-shaped. They provide support and stability, and their main function is to facilitate movement in the joints. Examples of short bones include the carpals of the wrist and tarsals of the ankle. The third type of bone is the flat bone. Flat bones are characterized by their thin, flattened shape, and they provide protection and support for the body's organs. Examples of flat bone include the skull, sternum or the breastbone, and the scapula or your shoulder blade. The fourth type of bone is the irregular bone. Irregular bones are bones that do not fit into any of the other categories due to their unique shapes. They are often quite complex and provide a variety of functions depending on their location in the body. Examples of irregular bones include the vertebrae of the spine and the pelvic bones. Now let's talk about bone structure. Bone structure can be divided into four typical layers, the periosteum, compact bone, spongy bone, and bone marrow. The periosteum covers the bones and contains blood vessels, nerves, and cells essential for bone growth and repair. The compact bone is a dense and strong layer that gives bones their hardness and strength. The spongy bones are a porous and lattice structure containing bone marrow, which produces blood cells and immune cells. The first layer is the periosteum, which is a tough, fibrous membrane that covers the surface of the bones. The periosteum contains blood vessels, nerves and cells that are involved in bone growth and repair. It is essential for the nourishment and protection of bones. Beneath the periosteum lies the compact bone, which is a dense and strong layer that gives bones their hardness and strength. Compact bone is made of osteons, which are cylindrical structures containing layers of mineralized bone tissue. These layers provide strength and stability to the bone. Beneath the compact bone is the spongy bone, which has a porous and lattice structure that makes it lightweight but still strong. Spongy bone contains bone marrow, which is the soft tissue that fills the gaps between the bone's lattice structure. Bone marrow is responsible for producing blood cells and immune cells in the body. There are two types of marrow. Red marrow produces most of the body's blood cells and the yellow marrow stores fat that can serve as an energy reserve. Now, the question is, how strong are bones? Bones are incredibly strong and lightweight, allowing them to support the body's weight while enabling movement. The strength of bones comes from their composition of collagen fibers and minerals, primarily calcium and phosphorus. By understanding the strength and composition of bones, we can gain a better appreciation for how the body works and how to keep it healthy. Now let's talk about bone formation, growth, and remodeling. Bone formation is a process called ossification which is carried out by cells called osteoblasts. Ossification begins in the fetus 
and continues through adolescence. At birth, most of the skeleton is made up of cartilage, but over time, the cartilage is replaced by bone tissue. During infancy and youth, bones lengthen and widen through a process called bone growth. This occurs at the ends of long bones, where cartilage is replaced by bone tissue. This process is essential for maintaining the body's proper proportions and enabling movement. Bone remodeling is a process that occurs throughout our lives and involves the removal of existing bone tissue by cells called osteoclasts and the deposition of new bone tissue by osteoblasts. The process is critical for bone growth, changes in bone shape to adjust to stress, calcium ion regulation, and bone repair. The mechanism of bone remodeling involves the coordination of osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Osteoclasts remove existing bone tissue by breaking down minerals and proteins, while osteoblasts deposit new bone tissue by secreting collagen and other proteins. This process helps to maintain the strength and integrity of bone tissue throughout our lives. There are a few more slides, so please bear with me. I hope that you are still okay. Let's talk about joints. Joints are the sites where two or more bones meet and are held together. They are essential for providing mobility and enabling us to carry out our daily activities. There are three main functions of the joints, holding, like for example, holding the bones together, providing mobility, and transferring weight and force. There are three categories of joints, and the first category is synovial joints. Synovial joints are the most common type of joints and are found in the shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, and ankle. These joints are formed by bones that are united by a joint cavity containing synovial fluid enclosed by a capsule. The synovial fluid lubricates and reduces friction between the articular cartilage, which covers the surfaces of the bones where they meet. This allows for smooth movement and reduces wear and tear on the joint. Cartilaginous joints, on the other hand, connect two bones by cartilage and are slightly movable. These joints are found between adjacent vertebrae in the spine or backbone. Fibrous joints are the third type of joints and they are characterized by bones joined by fibrous tissues. These joints are immovable and are found in structures such as sutures between the flat bones of the skull. I hope that you learned something from me today and you enjoyed our skeletal system lesson. Enjoy the rest of the day. Be blessed and be a blessing to others. Bye everyone!